<laughs> so hello and welcome back to time for you where you get to take a moment to kick off your shoes sit back and nurture love presence and well-being in your life and as you know my name is Shelia Stevens and I am coming to you today from just around near Frankfurt on Main in Germany. Leah Vanley, who is usually with me today, um, who's in Zurich, would usually be popping or already here, but she'll be popping in today maybe during this conversation. There's a little bit of a personal situation going on that she had to take care of. And today I have a very special guest, my BFF, Alyssa Jade McDonald Bertel, coming all the way to us um, from Australia. Alyssa, hello. Good evening. <laughs> so tell us <tell laughs> from Alyssa. one side of the day to the other side of the day. I can tell you the day yeah. you're about to experience is gorgeous. Yeah, thank you for telling me that. Well, it's it's 12 p.m. here and it's 9 p.m. at your end. Tell us where you are in Australia, Brown. And for the people, so the listeners are from the UK, they're from the United States, they're from Europe, they're kind of from all over. Not everybody knows everything about Australia. So I will. Well, maybe somebody is even around here. You never know. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to join you today from the east coast of Australia, right in the middle, in a place called the Gold Coast, which is a beautiful set of few hundred beaches. And I'm specifically on Mermaid Beach, which is like as delightful as it sounds. And it's beautiful surf every day and uh, full of sunshine because we have summer right now. Mm, yeah, Alyssa's been sending me lots of um, photos and videos, and she looks very much like a mermaid herself. She's pretty much in the water <laughs> every day. She's sending me surfing photos or jogging up and down the beach and all the stuff she's been doing. Um, well, Alyssa, let's jump into the podcast topic. So <clears throat> last week, um, you sent me uh, a message um on whatsapp i think it was and lissa is notorious for sending me quite long messages <laughs> sometimes they are upwards of 10 15 minutes and you know i get through all of them no problem and last week was no exception <laughs> another message came through um and I like to um, listen to Lissa's messages in the morning when I'm doing my makeup, especially now that she's right in Australia. Um, so you were kind of in your afternoon time sending me messages and I was just getting up. And this message really kind of hit home with me. It really, it really did something to me. And um, I want to talk about that message that that you sent. And it has to do with um gratitude and maybe before we talk about the message let's talk about queenie a little bit because we have to put our main character into focus <laughs> to understand the story um queenie is Alyssa's mom and that's not her actual name <laughs> but it's what we call her and yeah, Alyssa, maybe maybe give the listeners just some insight into who Queenie is and the situation that she finds herself in, just a little context for the for the for the conversation. Will do. Queenie is my beautiful mother. She's the type of uh, woman that you would have as a friend that uh, when she came into the room, you would start laughing already because she would either enter with a sparkle. <laughs> or make you laugh as you enter and she would be the sort of person that was steadfastly at your side for whatever issue you were championing. When she was 21 she took a boat from Australia to Europe to go backpacking and working for four years back in the 1960s when it was still considered to be exciting. She met a man from Papua New Guinea and ended up moving to the jungles and establishing agricultural lands. She was always exploring and finding new ways. Hi, Leah. Lovely to see you. Hi, Leah. Right in the middle. And so this is Queenie. She's this miraculously uh, large uh, personality full of heart. And like I started off saying, she's the sort of friend that she's the one that you would want to be your friend. And I was just very lucky to have her as a mother. 
And so this personality that would get on a boat in the 1960s and travel for three months to get to Europe, this sort of person who had moved up mm. in New Guinea, this is, um, this is uh, you know, intellectually curious. This is culturally aware. This is uh, spirited and joyous. This is courageous and unafraid. This is who she is as, as a person. Mm-hmm. And currently, she is older. She's 83 and she has dementia. And we saw dementia coming in when she was around 50. So it's been a slow and graceful slide into like cognitive fog and confusion and fear, uh, which uh, she somehow has managed with this same spirit as the one that seems to have taken her around the world before and and been a joy. And and this is the the message I left you, Shalia, is I'm I'm in Australia now for six weeks. I come home every year to spend a large amount of time with her. And uh, I'm just overwhelmed every day I visit her in a nursing home. And she has dementia to the point where she can't construct a sentence anymore. Um, she she can answer yes or no, and she communicates with sounds and her body language, her intentionality, which is if she's, you know, she's often dancing and she's always singing. Um, that's her language. But she can't say what she did today and she um, can't discuss things necessarily. So communicating with her about, you know, is she okay? What's going on? How does she feel? What does she need? Um, does she have any pain? You know, she's 83. I don't know about you, but I'm only 44 and I've got like, oh, I've got a niggle on my hip and I've got something on my knee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I have cognitive processes where I can communicate that and she doesn't have that so much anymore. Um, and what she has is a heart full of sparkle, mm-hmm. joy and gratitude. She communicates fully, but with this positive spirit that I've never seen in another individual in my life Mm -hmm. yeah 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 hi Leah welcome to the conversation we're just giving some background to to Queenie to Alyssa's mom yeah Alyssa I I want to say a few words about Queenie if I might as well before we get really into it um you know I remember meeting her when you and I were just kind of fresh friends. I mean, it must've been 10, 11 years ago. Um, I really love Queenie so much. She's, she really is such a loving and joyous person. And I, I didn't know that she um, had already been experiencing the dementia, like from her fifties onward. Like I, when I met her, at that time, I guess it must've been around 2008 or nine roundabout. Um, I found her quite alert and and cognitively there considering her, if that was her situation, I didn't really recognize it at that time. I just remember one of the first times when she had come back after I'd known her for a few years and being in your, in your apartment in downtown Frankfurt, um, near, kind of near the main train station. And Queenie getting kind of lost when she would leave your apartment and go downstairs and kind of wander around the building and not be able to find her way back up. That was the first time I, you know, really recognized that something was going on with her. And um, I've just been on this journey with you as a friend, you know, um, just from you sharing like how things are developing and how you're coping. And, and that's been a great, um, it's been a great gift to me. I always feel like Queenie is one of our biggest teachers. And I'm saying my, one of my biggest teachers and one of your biggest teachers. Um, I can't tell you how much I learn when you see something through your interaction with her and, um, maybe to set the stage a little more, um, you know, I really could relate recently. Alyssa was sharing with me, you know, she's back home in Australia where she doesn't live the majority of the time. She's usually blitzing around the world to all different countries or she's in Spain and all over the place. Um, I know how it is to go home and, you know, you've got your whole family there, you know, your, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, maybe your aunts, your uncles, or whoever is, whoever's living and kind of to feel that pressure of like, where do I spend my time and 
how can I make it so that I give love to everybody? And I know you were also in that, that space recently. And I had this feeling like it, it must be even more so when you have um, a parent in that situation who you love very dearly and trying to balance, you know, how much time to spend with her? How much time do you have to give in, in the situation? And I know you're working there as well. Um, Alyssa graciously came on today for a 9 p.m. call, but she has like a 2 a.m. meeting that's coming up. So she's got a lot going on. So that's kind of where the message starts off last week that I got from Alyssa. Um, and um, yeah, Qu Queenie, Queenie's way of being just helped her to really solve that dilemma pretty easily. And I don't know if you'd like to just share the content of the message, um, you know, in your words today, Alyssa, what you told me. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a really good realization that you've made that it helped me solve the dilemma about priorities and uh, where to, how to be everything to everyone at once. And uh, cleaning was a, a good example. So while I'm here, as you said, I'm, I'm working and I have uh, friends and family and commitments and all sorts of things to do. And um, I I try to visit my Queenie every day. She is, a, she is a bike ride away. She's about half an hour on the bike and it's the middle of summer. And an Australian summer is it's warm. <laughs> and I, I planned it like that because I thought what a lovely idea I'll turn up but inevitably it's a bit sweaty and it's a bit um hot sometimes and I feel a bit flustered and uh I don't turn up looking the nicest always or I'm in the middle of taking a call here and dropping something off and um in the beginning I was thinking oh I should really you know it's a nursing home and I should uh, look a bit nice and I should you know like anything thinking to be everywhere to everyone but also be the best to everyone at every place and that inevitably grows barriers and what I just found was just turning up she was just full of gratitude thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for everything thank you for the bunny's ears thank you for being here she never asked me where I was before this she never asked me where I was going to after this she's 100% present in the times that we spend together She's like fully there and she's just so grateful for everything. And mm, I know, you know she's 83. She's got a bit of wiggles going on with the hips. She broke her back two years ago. I mean, it's, it's still healing, but I've not heard her say one word of negativity. She's, I'm here six weeks. I visit her every day. I hear how lovely the staff are. I hear how delicious the food is. I hear what a beautiful day it is. I hear, thank you for coming to visit. I hear, isn't that lovely music that's being played? From a person who does experience fear and anxiety because I see it come across her face when she realizes that she's forgotten something or she can't speak or she can't get out her intentionality. I see when she moves that something hurts in her back because she stops and her face demonstrates it. She doesn't say it. And it's not learned stoicism. It's not um, positive psychology or sunny side of the rainbow. It's because she doesn't have the cognitive capacity to hold those philosophies. Those walls are very hard to hold up. I know I <laughs> hold up many of them in my days. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have that capacity because she just struggles to understand that where I'm feeding her her meal. And she's like, that's delicious. And it's a good nursing home, but I know it's not delicious. And it's just, I, 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 I'm struggling struck by her level of gratitude and her utter absence of negativity and her absence of comparison. And however I turn up, sweaty, salty, caught in the rain, only there for a minute because I have to do something else, none of that even matters. I don't even bother saying how long I'm there for or not. 
Like, I don't even bother saying why I'm wearing bike pants again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she doesn't even notice. She, they're pink or, or they're blue. And the lunch is delicious and the coffee is funny. And um, I think, Shelley, the message I wanted to, to share with you, and I know it's a, a, a value that you and Leah hold very close together, especially in your work together, which is that presence being utterly present and leaning into the just the she, she is my living example of this mm -hmm. and I shared the message with you because I thought that's what we talk about sometimes and it's something you practice and here is somebody who doesn't seem to practice yeah she just yeah, and, and and you also said something else in that message, like, you know, how easy it made it for you to show up. Could you talk a little bit about that, Alyssa? Because that was really powerful to me. Like, it just didn't matter what you could give that day. It just made it easy for you. That that was really, that really stuck with me. But I want to hear it from you. It lowered the barrier. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to look nice. I didn't have to stay long. I didn't do anything. So my willingness to give anything went through the roof. And so I didn't double check myself. I didn't moderate. I don't moderate myself. I don't think how I could do something better. I don't stop and tr try and do something bigger. I just do whatever's in the, whatever's in the tank <laughs> that day. <laughs> we go with that. And that meant that I turn up every single day and I have a fantastic time because probably in my mind, I'm not thinking today's going to be a grand day. I'm going to buy, her, you know, we're going to go shopping and I'm going to buy her this uh, or today's going to be a grand day. We're going to play and sing the ukulele. Like, because who knows how she's going to be on the day. And that's a bit like life, isn't it? It's a bit like having no expectations on one side but also her way of saying yes to everything and not questioning anything outside of that meant that the everything that could come through was um, everything that I have. Mm -hmm. And it's not just me. It's like the team at this nursing home, I mean, there's they all know her and how she's a dancer and a chatter and a happy one and everything and they they do all sorts of things I turn up her hair is in immaculate braids she's got bits and pieces of her you know I I, I have like these mermaid clip-in funny hair color pieces like they spend time on her every day she looks she can't dress herself you know she can't do all of this and they spend this time so she is total show pony every day having as much as she would always be but it's kind of like I think it works, the magic works with them too Yeah. because she's just like up for everything. And um, and so then they will do everything. And I see them spending a lot of time. I, you know, her, everything around her is is radiating that. There's a funny little experience we made in the hospital last year when she broke, or two years ago when she broke her back. I think I had left you a message about this that, in the hospital, she broke her back. And the, in, in the hospital, the doctors would come in and they're exhausted. They're like, you know, seeing everybody every day and doing their very best. But they're humans, man. And sometimes they get yelled at by patients and sometimes they're just tired and sometimes they're doing an extra shift. And, you know, sometimes they've got personal stuff going on. And when mum was in the hospital with the with the back broken she was in quite severe pain and she wasn't her usual sunny self she certainly wasn't full of gratitude she was just kind of neutral and fearful and she would often look at the doctors when they come in to assess what's going on because she doesn't have the cognitive capacity she would always read what other people are doing and we found that we could intercept that process by kind of showing the doctors first who she is so they responded so we made her we sat on the floor and we got my brother and I we got cardboard and we cut out hats and uh, with ears and with signs on there saying I'm a sunshine and and lips and all sorts of things and we found that creating a signal a visual signal on her 
that she's this person inside. They would come in and come in, and then they would look up and they would give her this magic moment and she read it and felt it in a second and she sent it straight back and she went from like and and we found that oh it's you know it's it's so easy to create these ping pongs of connection and joy and sparkle and is another another example of of how just showing those colors and that openness is is so remarkable mm. the experience for mum was just amazing and then she could be her full sunshine self because she's like oh I'm safe it's all good they're showing me things that are fine I'm fine yeah yeah Interesting. yeah yeah I that's one of the things that I've learned Leah I'm gonna ask you in a minute for to come in because I don't want you to be silent the whole time um it's one of the things I really learned throughout your journey with with your brother as well with Nate and other family members who are involved you know in, in the whole thing is just watching you guys follow your intuitions tiny step by tiny step all through the way and what you just talked about you know just kind of noticing huh she's reacting to that what do I feel would help her with that and and going from that inner space of getting an impulse to to do that to show that outward sign watching you guys do that again and again and again and again um, has just been a life lesson for me, Alyssa. Well, I don't want to get really emotional, but I sometimes like feel really emotional about Queenie. You know it. Um, and the love that you guys have together. And um, last week, when um, coming back to the message, um, what what that did for me, or why it touched me, and and this is why um, Leah and I love this understanding. We love the podcast and all of it is because everyone's going to hear something different out of that. You know, like someone's going to take away something totally different than I took away. It's This is not saying this is the takeaway you should get out of what Alyssa is saying. But what I took out of it was immediately when the message was over, I started to sort of virtually go through my relationships with everybody that I care about. And I just noticed, where do I show up the way Queenie's showing up? Not, you know, present, but also with no expectations, you know? And and you're one of the people who I could put a check on. Like, you know, you you travel a lot. You're always on the go. You, you, you jump in, you jump out. Like, I might hear from you tons in a row or long time not and vice versa, and where I have no expectations on you, every minute that you give me, I'm I'm coming with a queenie thank you. Thank you. And there I don't, it doesn't matter where you've been, except for I'm interested in what you're what's been going on in your life. Not to check were you with another friend or versus me, or did you spend enough time? I, I don't have that with you at all. And I have other relationships that I was just checking mentally, but that's not true. Where I where I do have expectations where I don't just show up with a thank you I I set limitations on um you know what's what's acceptable what's not acceptable and and I I looked into those relationships and I you know asked the reverse question is which is am I making it easy for that other person to be with me to give what they what's from their heart or am I actually constricting their giving and pushing them away with with that expectation right and it was just like like a moment of reflection um that I had and it really it really shifted some things for me in some relationships just subtly in the last week just since I heard that conversation so I just wanted to share that with you because um, I know I know it meant something for you to take time out of your day to share that with me that I that I took it wholeheartedly and saw something for myself. So I just wanted to say that, Leah. What about you? Mm. What did you hear in all of that? Like, yeah, it's really just thank you. It's so lovely to see you to hear both of you and to feel the love and just 
the luck of <laughs> having the opportunity to be in the same room at this moment in time. And that's all. And maybe it's the, at the end, it's love. And it's love. And that's so cool mm -hmm. to feel and know and see and tap into. And also knowing that it's always love, even when people do not feel it and not know it and not experience it. It's still there. And and it's always just a glimpse, just a moment, just a smile, just a, a song away. And that's incredible, hopeful. And your mom and you are lighthouses, mm -hmm. like towards this, oh, look there. It's love. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Alyssa. And also, I wanted to say something today because it's been on my heart before we close up, like just about caregivers in general, um, because I think it was Rose Kennedy who talked about, you know, we're all going to either be caregivers in our life and or receive care in our lives mm -hmm. and it's a process like that kind of rolls in each of our directions in some form or another like people who have children they get it earlier than others you know Leah's caring for two boys and also a, a girl who's kind of like oh, her boy. her daughter in a way now um for me I I always kind of avoided the caregiving role because my mother died from caregiving. That's like, that's what my inside intrinsic idea is of her, of her giving too much of herself to the, um, to the detriment of herself in a way uh, out of a lot of love. Um, and maybe that's not even true. Maybe that's something I get to look at new as life goes on, but it's been my idea of it. And recently I've been in the caregiving role just for my dogs, you know, just for my puppies who are really sick. Um, and what I noticed was a whole new level of love opened up in mm. giving care for something in a way that really, really needed my help. And um, that's what I see also, Alyssa, in your situation with your mom, um, that role of a caregiver it kind of deepened your bond in a way and it deepens your insights. It deepens your growth. Um, so I just wanted to say out there to all the caregivers or the people being cared for or the people who are coming into that role soon, like just like hats off. It's such a special experience that can be massively hard and sometimes overwhelming. Um, but also it can be full of gifts Um I just wanted to share that because I've been seeing that a lot lately. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's a lovely thought. While you were sharing that, Shelly, it made me wonder about in the caregiving role, how we le can learn to be a care receiver. Because it's a little bit the feeling that I have the lesson from my mom in terms of I have less of a fear of the future and my own aging and things when I think, oh, that's that's the model to run. It's, oh, it's, it's just gratitude. And it's lowering expectations and making it easy to receive as such and to just trust that what will come is needed. And it certainly in my mind improves my thinking about being a care receiver mm. in the future, in aging. But we could also bring that to today. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, it's a principle yeah. as opposed to a time or a condition or a circumstance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we can um, 
try something in the next week or so when we receive yeah. care. Mm -hmm. It's our little one offering us a tea or whatever, you know, how full or not the cup is, how warm or not the tea is. <laughs> <laughs> tea bag is in or even out <laughs> like whatever it is right how can we <laughs> receive with the level of gratitude almost that that queenie would which is you know returning the gratitude with song and dance to the person mm -hmm. <laughs> and i wonder what it would do yeah what just came to mind when you were speaking i run out of the house today early morning because of someone i I care <laughs> that was yelled at at the place when I arrived and and I sat down on the stairs for a moment after that and it was like yeah I'm sitting here and yeah it's cold and yeah I've been yelled at and I would run out of the house tomorrow morning again. It just doesn't matter somehow. And it sounds weird. And it's not that I don't feel the, oh, what's going on? And dare you? And But I just don't let my thinking carry myself away it's happening and I feel it and then I sit on the stairs and the love appears again because it doesn't go away by whatever experience I have and to go with that and not with the idea of how it should be or it's so light because it doesn't take long and half an hour later the person said sorry and I didn't expect that but it was already over and it was already done and I was not caught up in the experience till then. And in this caregiving role or in the role of being alive and in relationships with people to to come back a bit faster and lighter it's so much more fun and and not deeper but it's easier i don't feel the burden of it than how it was before. I felt burdened and and caught up in a lot of work and a lot of thinking about the work and a lot of stress and and the work is not less. It's still sometimes a lot and still sometimes a lot to juggle. But a lot less thinking and uh, more presence and more felt love, not just the knowing of love. And that's very cool. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This was such Thank a lovely you. conversation today. <laughs> and yeah, as always, like, we really hope that you hear something for yourself, um, whatever that is, whatever your wisdom needs to hear right now, whatever goes in resonance with you. Um, 
So, yeah, enjoy that knowing or that seeing. Um, I I got an email from a listener because we always say at the end of the <laughs> podcast, <laughs> if you, um, you know, if you want to continue to hear these episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcast or Google. Um, Google Podcast, I think it's called too. And it's called follow, not subscribe. She told me <laughs> very kindly because we've been saying subscribe to the podcast. It's follow us on on uh, one of these platforms. And if you know someone in your um, environment, you know, family, friends who could benefit um, from this episode, share with them, um, particularly people who are caregiving or receiving care, people who might, you know, find the topic interesting because they are themselves going through that in life share that with them we'd love for you to do that so thank you Alyssa for coming in the middle of the night Yay. Australia time thank you, thank you Leah for <laughs> popping in even though you have so much going on in your day and we'll hear you the next time on time for you until then bye-bye